Hi, welcome to Distinti's New Wave Theory. Uh, this is the first part of the course after the introduction. We're going to talk about what a wave is or what is a wave. We're going to discuss, discuss basic wave mechanics first conceptually and then we'll introduce some math later. The important thing here is to introduce a language that will allow us to discuss, discuss waves uh, more compactly. So what's a wave? A wave is a disturbance in a medium. A medium is the material that carries the wave. Like for example, water waves travel in the medium of water. Sound waves travel in the medium of air. Uh, string waves travel on the medium of string. Slinky waves travel on the medium of slinkies. And this disturbance is caused by the addition of energy. The energy of the disturbance is transmitted radially. radially. So in other words, when you drop something into the water here, you're going to see energy waves continually spread out from the point of disturbance spherically in a air or on the surface of the water as rings. Waves have losses. Waves do not travel forever. Otherwise, that would be in violation of rule of acquisition number nine, which is nothing is perfect or over-perfect, meaning there's no perpetual motion or over-unity. And there are three ways that waves lose energy. <clears throat> the first loss, which really isn't a loss, but we call it a loss. We, in engineering, we call it R-squared losses, because as a, as a ball of light progresses out, that light gets diluted over the volume just like these water waves as they travel out you can see their intensities getting their amplitudes getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter because what's happening is you're not actually losing the energy if I add up all the energy in this ring over here and because it's in a much smaller area the amplitude is higher but over here if I add up all the energy of this ring go all the way around and add up all the energy in this ring I'm gonna find it has the same amount of energy as this ring other than you know, frictional losses, which we'll talk about in a second, assuming no frictional losses. Therefore, it's not really a loss. Really, what it really is is a dilution of the energy as the energy spreads out. But we call it R squared losses, or in this case, because it's a surface wave, it would be R losses. Loss number two is breaking. Waves will break. All kinds of waves break. In a guitar, if you string, strum the string too intently, the guitar string will break. And water waves, when you get to the condition where the depth of the water is insufficient to contain the energy of the wave, the wave breaks. And when wave breaks, energy is converted into other forms, either sound waves, beach erosion, rip tides, heat, sprays of water particles, yada yada yada. So the energy of that wave is converted to other forms. Loss number three are medium losses. Okay, this is due to the viscosity, resistance, or friction of a medium. For example, a guitar string doesn't vibrate forever because it's, it's vibrating in air. It's losing energy through friction of the air, and therefore it's going to eventually lose energy. You look at the pond. Eventually, all of the surface ripples of a pond will eventually go away. That's Part of it is breaking on the, on the shore, but another part of it is the fact that the medium is viscous and has frictional losses, and it's going to... Uh, it's going to convert the energy to heat. Now one thing we have to learn is that there's no net displacement when waves propagate through a medium. However, okay, here's a little cork on the, on the top of a water wave. If we watch the behavior of this cork as the water waves go around, we're going to find that this cork is going to go in a circular fashion. And if this cork is very, very light so that the gravity doesn't really cause it much to slide down the hill, then what we find out, if we put confetti on the water, we're going to find that the confetti is going to go in a circular path, which means that, that the actual motion of the surface of the water isn't perfectly up and down like a lot of our models teach us. It's actually circular, and it might be circular or elliptical. In a guitar string, where we have standing waves, this point, these nodes stay in one place, but you're going to see motion in the string. If you put a mark on the string, you're going to see even as a wave goes to a string, that that mark is going to take not a perfect straight line, 
but it might actually be more elliptical. And so there's forward and backward motion to, to, to complement the standard motion, which is up and down. Okay, so wave is a transmission of energy through medium. The propagation of the wave does not cause a net displacement. However, there is what we're going to show as complementary motion, which I just showed you with the cork, because the cork doesn't go straight up and down. The cork will actually take either circular or an elliptical motion as the wave passes. And we know that energy is dissipated as the wave propagates through dilution. Now there's two modes of transmission, longitudinal and transverse. What this means is, longitudinal means that the main vibration, the primary motion that we see vibrating, moves in the same direction as the wave propagates. And the other one is transverse, where the motion of the medium, the main vibration of the medium, is transverse to the direction of propagation. Okay, longitudinal means that the vibration is in line with the direction of travel. Transverse means that the vibration is perpendicular or transverse to the direction of propagation. Okay, how does the transverse waves work? Well, if we take a slinky here, okay, and I wiggle this part, you can see that, well, this is probably is not, there's probably a better way to do this, but if you take a slinky and, and spread it out really, really wide, and you twick one side, you can probably see the wave travel up and down the slinky. And you can do this yourself. Get a slinky and have another friend stretch it out for about 10 or 15 feet and just, just flick one side and you'll see the wave, a transverse wave, travel up, bounce off the other person and travel back. Uh, another way that you can analyze, understand the way waves work is if you take a strip of paper, okay, and you watch. If You'll notice here on this diagram that at this point where we're at mean sea level, this water is rising where this water is falling. Well, what does that do? Well, let's see. If we have a wave that looks like this, and one side's going up, one side's going down, you see how the wave travels from left to right based on which side's going up or which side's going down? So that's how you can understand how a wave travels. This water's going to come up eventually, and this water's going to come down, which is pulling the water out. Eventually, this peak is going to move to the right. And that's the simplest way to understand wave propagation. You've got material moving up on one part of the wave, and on the other side, the material is moving down, and therefore the wave will travel to the left, or the right, rather. If I switch the direction of the motion of the, it's going to go the other way. Okay, that's the simplest way to show transverse waves. Longitudinal waves, you do the same thing with the slinky, but instead of flicking it up like this, okay, flick it in the direction and you'll see, and that one you can probably see from the camera as the, trans, the longitudinal waves propagate back and forth along the, the wave. So that's all how a longitudinal wave works. Now complementary displacement is what we were talking about before. Remember what we said is that the, in order for this water here because if the wave is propagating this way, eventually this water is going to move over to here. Somehow that water has got to move from here to here before it then finally moves back for the next wave. So there is motion in this direction, which I call complementary motion, because it's complementary to the primary motion, which is of the transverse wave. And that's the reason why this cork is going to take a circular path as the wave passes. Okay, in a uh, so that's how it is for a transverse wave. For a longitudinal wave, well, when the rings of the sprinky, splinky, compress, well, especially like sound and, and sound compressed in air, well, if you've got stuff being compressed, it's going to want to go the other way. Okay, it's got to go somewhere. So even in longitudinal waves, there's transverse, uh, there's complementary displacement. And so what we understand from this is you can't have transverse propagation without longitudinal displacement, and you can't have longitudinal propagation without transverse displacement. These complementary displacements or complementary flows are not accounted for in the models that we use every day in engineering. In fact, the modeling used by scientists and engineers, which are in the next video, are simple approximations which do not account for this complementary displacement. But what they have is perfectly fine for their purposes. 
But since we're looking for a more complete model, we can't afford to overlook even the slightest anomaly because even the most unimportant anomaly can have stunning ramifications, which is, will be discussed later. So what we review, we reviewed that a medium is disturbed by the addition of energy. That would be a wave. This energy propagates away from the disturbance in the form of waves. And there are two modes of propagation, longitudinal and transverse. And an anomaly that I call complementary displacement was discussed. We will come back to this later. Thank you very much.